Hey, this is Ina, in with you in the Fight Back, and today I'm going to talk about Solidarity Divided by Bill Fletcher and Fernando Gapasson. Uh, Solidarity Divided was um, a book about the problems facing the labor movement that was released several years ago, and it, if you were on the labor left, it generated quite a bit of buzz. And I'd like to talk about this book for a minute, because it's kind of contradictory, my feelings about it. The book generated a lot of praise. We got pretty good reviews in Monthly Review and Against the Current. And even one of my favorite authors, Mike Davis, gave the book um, high regard. My feeling is not quite so positive. Well, there's a lot of problems we know with U.S. labor. The fact is, um, and this is highlighted at the beginning of the book, where... Um, U.S. labor is contrasted to um, South African labor, where the U.S. Labor's, say, labor's role is to um, represent the interests of their members, and South Africans' labor's role, is, they say, is unions represent the interests of the working class. And this comes up quite a bit throughout the book, where um, class consciousness is, not, is certainly not a predominant element in the mainstream of United States labor. It is if you're in France, South Africa, even up north the border in Canada. And we see, we've seen some great general strikes throughout Europe in the last several months, and of course the Arab world as well. And although there has been a somewhat resurgence of labor's combativity with um, Wisconsin, that remains to be seen how long-standing it is. Now, Solidarity Divided looks at uh, the history of the labor movement, how we got here. So we see early inklings of labor in the late 19th century, the development of the CIO, the anti-communist purges. And this is actually probably one of the better strengths of the book, is looking at the development of labor itself. You know, who are the conservatives, who are the radicals, who contributed and why. And the authors look trace a lot of problems to labor to um, the purges of the 50s and the McCarthy era that pretty much got out anyone who is willing to talk about class or anyone who's really willing to actually put some backbone in the labor movement. And the authors look at we we look at problems with the the split in the change to win coalition that broke away from the AFLCO several years ago. And there's uh also some dealings with John Sweeney and his coming to power in 95 and pretty much how Sweeney became head of the AFL-CIO and was promising a lot of big reforms and, and such, but he really didn't quite deliver. And labor pretty much has continued as its stagnation, its long decline that we've seen. And I'd like to talk about some of the problems of this book. It, it, but, but a big plus is its analysis of history and a lot of the problems facing the labor movement. And they look at a lot of the top-down organizing efforts of labor to, you know, recruit new members that really haven't, that really kind of don't draw in a lot of the rank and file. But here's some of the problems with this book. Number one, and this goes for more Fletcher than Gabasson, is Fletcher is someone who, he pretends to be a radical maybe even a Marxist, and he's, he was uh, a top advisor to John Sweeney. He's been pretty influential in some of the top circles of the labor movement. And so he's got a real insider's perspective. And that seems to color a lot of it because he's, whatever his past may be, he is someone very much on the top looking down, despite what he may say otherwise. And furthermore, there's really not much analysis on neoliberalism and globalization. A lot of it's there, a lot of it's implicit, and that's kind of a drawback. And this is something, and this is going to get get to my main critique of this book, and more Fletcher himself, because Fletcher's per, probably the person I have a problem with, is this book, um, it claims to attack the Gomperson ideology, and I want to quote from the book on page 15 about what the Gompersonian uh, framework works. 
Samuel Gompers was one of the founders of the AFL, and he's notorious for business unionism. And this is pretty much how the two authors describe what Gompers saw as trade unionism. The role of trade union was simply to improve the lives of those who were fortunate enough to be union members. Gompers raised a form of trickle-down thinking his belief that the victories of trade unions might at some point improve the lives of unorganized workers. And furthermore, this is the emphasis also on page 14 that uh, labor has no have have uh, no permanent friends or enemies, but permanent interests. Now, this may seem class consciousness, the authors say, but he's really only talking about organized sector, and they skew class struggle and socialism, and you know pretty much the stuff labor needs to actually do a, a decent fight back. But here's here's the big problem with this. These and this go this is for Fletcher. There's really no analysis of the Democrat Party as a, a stalwart of capitalism. We've seen this under Clinton. We've seen it in Obama. The, despite whatever protestation to the contrary the Democrats claim, they serve the bourgeoisie. They, they are, at best, the good cop of capitalism. Obama launches imperialist wars the same as Bush. They both screw over the working class whenever they get the chance. And Obama, as we know, has launched FBI raids against socialist and radical activists. Yet, and this is, Bill Fletcher makes a good case for something he calls class struggle unionism, bringing the class struggle back to unions, you know, in a rather more conscious way. Yet, Fletcher, in a sense, is saying, right now, if you read his columns and you follow what he's been saying, he's pretty much a shill for the Democrats. He's a shill for Obama. And... In a sense, he's gone back to the Gompasarian framework. He's gone back to the idea that, you know, we some, in a roundabout, rather twisted way, saying Obama is somehow beholden to social movements, not true. Most of his um, donors actually are rather bit large corporations and capitalists, and somehow that labor will be better under Obama. We're waiting. And... This is rather a slap in the face to what he was saying in Solidarity Divided. Fletcher has gone back to supporting a bourgeois party. He's kind of dressed up. He almost has a social gompers outlook. You know, he's willing to look, look to the people in power to help serve labor where it suits them. And he's willing to dress that up, you know, in the social movement language of social justice and even throw in some class struggle in Marxist terms. Yet ultimately, Fletcher is serving the interests of the bourgeoisie. And my problem, and I don't normally like to do this, is, is with this with Bill Fletcher. Instead of coming out stalwart in support of, you know, a real class struggle unionism that would imply political independence from the Democrat Party, he's not doing that. And a lot of the labor activists I uh, met who were enamored of this book they, they were all pretty willing to make excuses for Obama when the situation called for it. Yet, if we are to take Fletcher at his word about class struggle unionism, about building, you know, workers of the world unite in solidarity, we have to say, break from the Democrats. Whether that means abstaining from elections, supporting a third party that's mildly left, or even supporting a socialist slash communist party is a question best debated at another time. But I think the beginning portion is you really can't support a bourgeois democratic party like the Democrats. They're they're just they're reactionaries, they screw over the work workers whenever they can, and they support imperialism. And Bill Fletcher, despite his often insightful analysis of the problems facing labor, he's gone back on it. He's gone back on solidarity divided. Because Obama suddenly can say hope and change, we're supposed to line up and salute, give me a break. You know, the reason I I haven't been involved, I left the, the socialist group I was involved with, is because they, they were willing to bend over backward to support these bastards. I'm sorry, Fletcher, if you're going to start talking about class struggle, back it up. Don't come, don't come around to us and say all this great stuff about class struggle unionism, and then be like, well, we got to support the Democrats. We've got to push them to the left, hold their feet to the fire. How? How the hell? What does that even mean, hold their feet to the fire? 
The Democrats are not your friends. They're not labor's, well, they might be Fletcher's friends, but they're not the friends of labor or workers anywhere. They're the, they're the enemy. And whatever else you may say is no socialist worth their salt should be supporting them. You end up supporting them, you're in, you're, you end up having to support empire, the austerity measures, the cutbacks that we all face. To do what? To, to make it not as bad as it should be? I'm sorry, but despite the great analysis found within Solidarity Divided, Fletcher's, uh, Fletch, the author Fletcher has, I don't know, gone off the dark side, I guess. Well, anyway, this is Ina, in with you in the fight back. Until next time.